Hey everybody, it's the Redstone Wizard here again, bringing you um, another episode of Let's Learn Some Redstone. Okay, a little quick review of the last episode. We, uh, well I just showed you guys a uh, binary encoder, didn't explain it too much, but yeah, that's good. that's a major project. Showed you just a input-output scenario. A not scenario, which is an input output in, uh, inverse, and, and this one's a uh, basic OR gate, NOR gate, AND gate, NAND gate. Now we're here. This is called an XOR gate. Basically, it is either this one or this one will give you an output. They have to be flipped. They have to be in the opposite positions for it to work. So let's just take a quick look. We've got pretty much almost a AND gate here. And the AND gate is powering this redstone dust, which turns off this torch, which then powers these lines from the uh, torches under there, which powers these torches, which powers that. Not extremely useful, but can be. You can use it for like combination locks and things like that. It's up to you how you figure out how to use it. Personally, I don't use this. It's not something that I find that useful. Now, here we have an XNOR gate. Like the XOR gate, except it's in reverse. So... One off, if uh, one side's on and the other, uh, if one side's on and the other side's off, it'll turn off the light. It's the same as the XOR gate, except we flip it at the uh, after the final part. So that's the XOR gate again. Uh, the XOR gate, uh, the XNOR gate, and the XOR gate. Yeah, they're, I don't find, you. I have no idea what to use them for, so I wouldn't be using them personally. Now, we're going, now we're getting into the more useful stuff. Now, what we got here is a simple RS NOR latch. And yes, it's, the, it is very simple. We push this button, it flips. If I push this button again, it does nothing. So every time you, every time the it flips, you have to hit the opposite button. Well, the downfall to this system is we're using dust. And honestly, I hate using dust whenever possible. If I I use some dust, but I like using other things to cut down on certain things. Typically lag, but if dust is necessary, then I use it. So I usually go with this one, this design right here. This is also an RS NOR latch. So if I hit the button with the lamp that's not on, the lamp doesn't change. Now if I hit the button with the lamp on, the lamp changes sides. And it doesn't work until I hit the button that the lamp is on. Now this is very simple. It is two droppers facing into each other and your output as a comparator. One item in. That's it. <laughs> so that's two versions of a RS NOR latch. You can choose whichever one you want to use. Personally, I like this one. You can even have it vertical if you want. That you have to have it uh, level. So now on to uh, another type. A toggleable flip-flop. As in, we are going to make a button act as a lever. So what we got here is a dropper facing up, going into another dropper facing towards these hoppers. These hoppers aren't necessary. You can have it here, rotate it where this comparator is sitting here, and a block. But 
For uh, if you don't want to lose items, just do another hopper or a chest. Don't use another dropper or a dispenser. And if you do use a dropper, have it go down. You'll shoot it into the uh, huh, hopper down there. And this hopper goes into the bottom one. So pretty much we just have a little loop going on. So if I hit the button, we've got a repeater powering the top dropper and the bottom dropper sending the item up. Can't send it more any further up. So it stays in this top dropper, which then activates this comparator, turning on our lamp, we we'll only have one item. Then if you hit it again, it drops down and to the bottom one instead. So yeah, it'll, it just it just pretty much flips to the from one to another to an, uh, it just keeps going back and forth. Can get a little noisy because you're using droppers and you're powering both of them. Now, if the only oh, noise you want to hear is a button noise, we got this one right here. Now, both of these I actually took from a good buddy of mine, Darth Dub. Great red stoner. Understands his stuff. Comes up with interesting words for some of the stuff. But this is the exact same thing. It's a T flip-flop. But instead of utilizing like hoppers and droppers, we're just using repeaters, locking repeaters. So what happens is when you push this button, this repeater powers on and locks this one. This one powers off because the torch is getting powered off, unlocking this one. Now, when a repeater that is locking uh, is locked, if I place dust next to it, it's going to be powered. So, we go from a powered state to a locking power state to then this one gets unlocked and then gets repowered. By the time this one gets repowered, the button has released and it sends a signal all the way through here, turning off this torch, which then will depower this after it finishes getting unlocked. And at that point, this one is also getting, this one's getting locked like it is. See, it's a, just a flip. And that's all this does. It just flips, which uh, it's a temporary flip and locking and using locking repeaters. Quite useful, but honestly, I don't mind some of the noise. This is more of what I would be using, anyways. Now we've got. Now we're into a little bit more complex. These are called hopper timers. Okay. Now. So far, everything I've shown works on Java and Bedrock. This works on Java and Bedrock. What we got here is four hoppers locking, uh, facing in, uh, two each facing into each other. In this bottom one, we have one item. And in these ones, we have as many items as we want. Okay. Uh, it's a little more expensive than this one, but I'll explain the advantages to this one versus this one. So if we and we, if we turn it on, we're going to be getting out. Uh, we're going to get a timer. Now you could utilize these torches as your outputs, or you could even set up a comparator here for your outputs too. Torches here, anything to produce an output. Now, let's go with the uh, standard hopper timer. We got two hoppers going facing into each other, two regular pistons for bedrock, sticky pistons if you're on Java, a comparator coming out of each going into a block with the dust on top. It is this look that you're looking for. And all you have, and putting a lever on anything just to stop 
yeah, putting it on a hopper, putting it on a uh, pi uh, for a piston. You just flip the piston, and the pistons will be pulling back and forth, transferring one item at a time from one to the other until it's done, and then it's just going to flip back over. The advantage to that one is it's quiet. Use more resources for silence. This one, it's cheaper. You don't even have to have a redstone block here. You can have a regular, you can use a regular block and repeater, repeater, torch, torch, same effect if you're using a standard block. And then you can also do the outputs the same way. So the advantage of this one is cheaper. The advantage of that one is silent. They both stop the same way. You pretty much stop the movement of the items in the hopper one way or another. Now we're getting into some more interesting things. Pulse extenders and a little bit more of, an, of clocks. Now this is just a, a standard pulse extender. Okay, there is nothing really special about this. You hit the button, it holds a pulse longer than the button does. And then it goes off. Okay, that's quite useful. I actually use this setup quite a bit. I, you, know, you can only get up to a certain distance before you have to do some really crazy things. Now, I call this a comparator decay clock. Now, I'm going to turn it off, and as you notice, we're getting a line. We have a line of repeaters getting powered. Line turns off. Now it's still holding. Now it is holding and it's going to be counting down every tick by one. Every redstone tick is getting counted down by one. And it takes a while because it has to go through the entire cycle. And then when it finally gets done, this will, uh, the torch will be turned off and then it will start again. And all you have to do is just power that torch and this will finish decaying because the way I'm using dust here, not a repeater, just to turn off the torch. And now we're getting into more. And now that's just a comparator clock. There's other ways of doing it using repeaters and a comparator. But this is just something. I just do weird things like this anyways. So now we got what uh, this is actually one of the smallest variable pulse extenders it has some advantages and has some disadvantages okay and this is also a variable pulse extender it has advantages and disadvantages so first off the advantage of this one is is not as resource intensive as this one but this one uh, but the disadvantage to this one is you uh, you pulse it once, item starts transferring, and then once they hit, if you hit it again, once the item start hitting back, if you hit it again, it's going to start the cycle from that point, transfer it so it's a slightly longer. Can be useful, can be detrimental. That's up to you. But and another thing is you cannot have an entire five stacks of items in here see now we got uh, items i'm going to hit it and items are going down those are the two disadvantages for this one it's the resource light is the advantage easy to build but it's not fail proof or and you can't have five full stacks okay but that's not the big issue that's silent this is silent on Java, if you're going, you, know, you can use an Etho hopper clock. Replace one with a uh, with a regular piston, and you have the same thing. All you have to do is just update one of the pistons. That's it. But onto this one, this is actually something that I designed. It is a pulse extender, also, and. At the moment, it's not set up exactly, but it holds a pulse a lot longer. It takes a little bit longer than that one or an ethohopper clock, 
but it's silent. And then no matter how many times I hit this one, if it hasn't transferred over all the items, it will not go back. So it's semi fail proof, but one major advantage is we got the item in there. Let's transfer it over. Oh, actually, it's I don't want it. I want to put it back. I can actually shift it over. That one and Etho and the Etho Copper and the Etho Pulse Extender. You can't do that. You can't just say, oh no, I'm transferring the items back over. The items will just go back over. You have to wait for them to finish. So honestly, I think the automatic reset back over is an advantage versus no reset for either one. Choice is up to you guys though. Now we got one little thing. You're gonna hear in some videos a of falling edge and rising edge. Now Easiest way to explain it. A falling edge circuit is when the circuit is activated on the button, on the pressing of the button. The falling edge, uh, that is the rising edge. No, that's the falling edge. The button is going down. Fall. And the rising edge is when the button goes up. It also works for levers too. So let's just grab a lever. Okay. Now, right now, this is the falling edge. Now, if you notice, this lamp went on. Now, if I flip this, this lamp will go on. That now This one is falling. This one is rising. We use the term for the button, not a lever. But a rise means the button is coming up, and a falling means the button is going down. You push the button, the button automatically comes up. So that's the difference between them. And a sticky piston with an observer is the easiest way to do a rising edge and a falling e a rising edge and a falling edge or a rising or falling edge. It's easy now i've just got a falling edge monostable versus a rising edge now i got a rising edge so that's those and timings like this are crucial i do use them because i have to have certain timings on certain things so i hope you guys enjoyed the video if you guys like the video, please leave a like, questions, comments, leave them in the comments section unless it's something very serious that you really need a question answered. I recommend joining my Discord. We have a solid community. If I can't answer it, if I'm unable to answer it, I do have people that know quite a bit, maybe not as much as me, but we will be able to give you an answer. If you guys want to support me, you could either uh, you know, you, uh, subscribe or join my Patreon. Links in the description. But you guys, this is the Redstone Wizard. Enjoy building.